Hello, my name is Beth Dixon and this is part one of a video series on frequency distribution and histograms. Thanks to Vicki Borlaug for allowing us to use her PowerPoints to make this presentation. We will cover the two broad topics of frequency distribution and histograms. And we have the following goals. Given raw data, construct a frequency distribution, relative frequency distribution, percent frequency distribution, and histogram. Given a frequency distribution, find the lower class limits, the upper class limits, and the class width. Using raw data, construct the classes when given the lower class limit of the first class and the class width. And lastly, we'll have a word of caution about the vertical axis on the histograms. We will divide these videos into parts to keep the videos short and sweet. Look at the data presented here. We have the weight in pounds of 40 students. This is what we call raw data, the list of numbers we have collected. Just looking at the raw data, it's difficult to answer some basic questions like most of the weights are between what values? The majority of these people are below what weight? Are there more weight values at the low end, the high end, or in the middle? We will do some summary statistics on this data set to help us to understand this data set. Remember that a statistic is simply a numerical summary of a sample. First, we will construct a frequency distribution to organize our data set. If you're doing the example along with this video, you will need to create a table that looks like this one or use the PDF file that goes along with this PowerPoint that contains this table. You may even want to pause the video here to copy the table if you're doing it by hand. We will divide the data into these classes. Tally up the number in each class to find the frequency and then we will discuss the relative frequency and the percent frequency. The data set has been added back to our screen so that we can tally our numbers. Now for a closer look at the classes. Notice that the data set is rounded to the nearest whole number and our classes also have whole numbers. The number of decimal places used in the classes match the decimal places in the data. The number of decimal places used in the classes here to the left must match the number of decimal places in our raw data. Also notice since the raw data is rounded to the nearest one pound there will be a one pound gap between the classes, between the first class and the second class. Between class one and class two, there is a one pound gap. 127 minus 126 is a one pound gap. And that is okay because all of the data is rounded to one pound and there will be no data that falls in between that 126 and 127 pounds. There is also one pound between class two and class three. It jumps from 135 to 136. The difference between that is one pound. 
between classes 3 and 4 it goes from 144 to 145 and the pattern will continue from 153 to 154 162 to 163 and 171 to 172 And again, we have no weights that fall in between the classes because all of the data is rounded to the nearest one pound. And that leaves us that one pound gap that makes sense for our classes. Next, we will tally the data. And each of our data will fall into one of the appropriate classes. The easiest way to count how many data is to place a tally mark for each data. Looking at 138, it is between 133 and I don't know where the number 133 came from, so I must have been sleeping. It is between 136 and 144, so it is in the third class. So we'll place a tally mark there. The next number is 146. It falls between 145 and 153. We'll place the tally mark there. And now that you've got the pattern, I'm just going to fill in the next one. 168 falls between 163 and 171. 146 again falls into the class here. 161 falls here. Notice when I have a second tick mark, I don't change that to a 2. I just put another tick mark or tally mark next to the first one. And then I'll proceed with the next column and just proceed as I go through. As I go through, there's the fourth mark. And as I make the fifth mark, notice that I group it together and make a group of five. That group of five is easier to count, so the fifth mark always groups the previous four so that I now have a group of five. And I'll continue along making my marks. Notice another group of five, another group of five, and just keep continuing. Woo! Got slap happy there. Uh, click happy. Next, we'll find the frequency for each class, and the frequency shows how many are in each class. So we're going to change those tally marks into a frequency simply by counting how many tally marks we made. For the frequency, that tells us how many, and it changes the tally into a number. So how many do we have? did we have between 118 and 126? we had 3. How many do we have between 127 and 135? We have 5. And see how easy it is to see that there are 5 because it's in that group. How many between 136 and 144? 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. How many between 145 and 153? Again, counting by fives is very easy. 5, 10, plus 2 more make 12. How many between 154 and 162? 5. How many between 163 and 171? We have 4. And how many in our last class between 172 and 180? We have Two. And that completes our frequency column for our table. And since we're reaching close to the 10 minute mark, I'm going to pause here and this will complete the first step in calculating the frequency for a data. Please watch part two where we'll talk about the relative frequency and the percent frequency of the same set of data. Thank you for watching. And this is Beth Dixon.